Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Can I be fair? I mean, sure? like, re- I mean, like, considering. How are you doing? Considering. 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 It's the same thing you ask someone, like if they just lost someone and you're like, Hey, how you doing? And then they make a face and then you go, well, you know, considering, you know, we were, we were actually literally just joking about how like we need, you know, there's the five stages of mourning. We need one of those specifically tailored to, to Buckeye fans, which is like, blame the quarterback, blame the coach. And then eventually you get to fire Gene Smith. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know, it's so to answer five question, stages of people you want fired at least. To answer your question, Jared, Something fucking like disappointed. That. Yeah, no. And like, it is what it is. Um, it sucks. Mm-hmm. It sucks a lot. Um, I'm going to try and go at this um, as rationally as I can. Because I think that there are one too many people blaming Kyle McCord. If I'm being honest. Um, there's a lot of people like and you can blame Ryan Day. That's fine. He gets paid a lot of money. Go go blame Ryan Day. That's I'm fine with that. That's cool. Um, but like to call for his job, I think is absurd. And I get it. I get it. I do. You want your pound of flesh. You you're angry. You 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 want justice or vengeance or 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 something. And you want change. The thing's broken and you want change. I understand where that's coming from. I think that I mean if we're going back to the stages of mourning, I think that's literally I think that I think we could stretch that uh to to, to encompass uh, negotiating, right? If only we had a different coach, if only we had a different quarterback, if only we had a, I really want to caution people as far as like, and and I know that like people are just going to yell and it's going to, in an attempt to make themselves feel better and in a, in a sense to gain some sort of control over the situation. But like, I'm I'm sorry, Ohio State fans. It's not your God given right to beat Michigan. And maybe that's the old head in me talking, the per- a person who remembers the Cooper years. Um, and and don't get me wrong, do not get me wrong. I'm also upset. I'm also angry. Please please don't mistake me trying to be rational as me being dispassionate because believe me, I'm not dispassionate. I I am not dispassionate, but at the same time, it's you have to approach things from a rational standpoint and not knee jerk your way into being irresponsible. I mean, the similar the similarities, Jared, and and you're gonna you're gonna hear it all off season. You're you're just going to hear the similarities with Coach Day and Coach Cooper is there. The similarities is there. I'm really strong recruiting, strong recruiting class, strong, cool. um, uh, strong against opponents that's not Michigan. But then when it when it comes to the game that matters. It laid an egg here, laid an egg. Absolutely did here. And I mean, let let me, let me say this. Ohio state fan, fans in general, people. And, you know, I'm just saying, I'm saying Ohio state fans because this is an Ohio state podcast. I'm talking to Ohio state fans, right? Because literally everyone does this, but you want to put yourself in the seat of the protagonist. You want to think that everything that changes or everything that has to do with everything has to do with your team. The other team is uh, just a bunch of stormtroopers all looking identical, 
Nothing about them's changing. Nothing about them's different. Which is obviously wrong. Um, Cause I'll, I'll, I don't know who needs to hear this. Uh, Chop Daddy says they shouldn't be fired. He needs to figure out his approach. I don't know who needs to hear this. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Jim Trestle and Urban Meyer never, never face a Michigan team as good as the Michigan team the past two seasons. Boss. I no, I, I a hundred percent. No, no. If you, if you change that, if you change that to just Urban Meyer, I would completely agree with you. There was, a, there was a couple of really good years under Trussell he, that he went up against. I mean, the o, the O six team was fine. That was a, that was, that was a good, that was a great was a year. Team. And I mean, well, can, can we be honest? Michigan can we won, be honest Michigan about the big... The, the big 10 in 2000, 2003 and 2004, I believe. And so can, there's been some really good Michigan teams under Trestle. But under, but but under can we, Urban but can Meyer, we be really yeah, I will completely agree with you. Can we be really honest about the, the status of the Big Ten during those years? Ohio State you, and Michigan you, you, always you looked... This. No, no, it's it's not nearly as bad as it is. It's fine. It's fine right now. It's not great right now. It was better a couple years ago. It's just sort of... It's okay, defensively take, take, very strong right now. It's take offensively out, take kind out, of garbage. Take out the top three in the East... You, you you got you got a shitty conference like it, nobody on the West like I, I know Iowa's going to the, the you're the, talking uh, specifically about game, this Iowa's year though terrible you're talking specifically Wisconsin's about this bad. year I'm not I wasn't talking specifically about this year I'm talking about you know talk about the Big Ten and because every, every conference is how the the SEC sucks this year. If you take out the top three team, if you take out the top two teams, the SEC sucks this year. That's as Spike says, that's most conferences, though. If I hear a player or coach say it's just another game, they should be immediately removed from their role. Uh, well, for what it's worth, Ryan Day has never said that and does not believe that. Um, and if any player said it after the game, uh, give give them their copium, give them, you know, they, they 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 got their heart broken on national television like give them give them some grace give them some space um but i i think the point i'm trying to say is fans always want to cast their team as the protagonist and I want to say something. Michigan has sucked. If you ignore these last two or three years. So from 2020 back, Michigan has sucked ever since they fired Lloyd Carr. There were a couple seasons here or there where they were okay, where they were, where, where they were a good team. Why is Day now conservative as the head coach? I don't think he is. And I know you're going to put in the halftime thing. Uh, I didn't disagree with the call at the time, to be honest. Yeah, that, that's that's something that I I thought about, especially in the in this game and really overall. In hold the, on, hold on, I'm sorry, Kyle. The Michigan Chop says he 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 says not conservative vanilla. The offense was very vanilla this year. And that is because our offensive line couldn't give Kyle McCord more than two seconds at any time during the season. Yeah, the offense was very vanilla this year, but it had to be. So, so two two th two thoughts for that. Yes, I, I agree. They looked very vanilla, especially in this Michigan game. I was hoping to see a little bit more creative um, plays from Ryan Day here, because all all we keep hearing is about how great of a Fancy offensive um mastermind that Ryan Day is, and he can he can he can pull up a a great play here that really turns the tide of of a game here. Doesn't I was matter. Really expecting, I was expecting to see something from Ryan Day here, especially especially when he comes 
to this game here. We saw Michigan, especially in that second half, come out with with a couple of just out of the back pages of their playbook here to get their offense going. D- didn't really see that from Ryan. I Day. disagree. And, se- and secondly, and secondly, too, pointing I thought to they the did a offensive lot of line good be- things. being the offensive line being really bad. Yes, yes, it was. It's not to the standard that it should have should be here. But Ryan Day's got to find ways to he is to get ar- to point. get around that too. You say there wasn't he wasn't being creative. Yes, he was. He was just being creative in the run game. When was the last time you saw Ohio State do pitches? And I know the pitch isn't the biggest wild thing ever seen, but we absolutely saw new running schemes out of this offense, especially in the second half, but also in the first half to get the running game. This is the number one run defense in the country in Michigan with a subpar mm-hmm. offensive line and Ohio state ran the ball way better than my expectations, way better than my expectations. They ran the ball. So they did not give up that. That is such a tired trope where, where what at any point did you ever see the defense giving up? Stop it. You're just copying and pasting the talking points from two years ago. Stop. Think, think of something new. Be original. Our defense never went from aggressive to not aggressive enough. Our defense went from aggressive to not aggressive enough. Uh, maybe. Possibly. Possibly. I, I don't have a strong opinion on that either way. But Kyle, as far as, especially in the passing game goes, do me a favor. Look at any play, any play that they threw the ball deep. It was either a seam pass. It was either a seam pass or a fly. It was just Mm -hmm. run straight. The one time they tried to run a, uh, the one time that I saw, and, and maybe there were other called, but McCord went to a different person. But the one time I saw them try to run a deep play that wasn't a seam or a fly, well, the two times actually, was one when he got sacked. He was, I think, I I forget if it was Emeka or if it was Fleming running a post over the middle. It was the play he got sacked. And the other was uh, the, the the, the, the game ending interception. Which, and people want to, listen, if you want to shit on McCord for the first interception, go for it. I, I think, I, I think that, I think um, Harrison gets some blame on that first pass too. But if you want to blame, if you want to blame Kyle McCord for the first interception, go do it. That's fine. That's fine. Do that. The second interceptions, what the, if he gets sacked, the game's over. He had less than two seconds to throw the ball. He got absolutely creamed. I don't think he got the ball off cleanly anyway. Like, I don't think it was he got it off cleanly. And he couldn't step into the throw either. He couldn't step into the throw. I, well, did you want him to take the sack? Because that wouldn't have worked either. He had to do so something. He got rid of the ball. Again, if you want to blame him for the first interception, blame him for the first interception. But... I don't know. People are like, oh, he threw the interception at the end. Therefore, it's his fault. And because most Ohio State fans aren't clever enough to blame anyone other than the coach or the quarterback, that's what we get. All right. So here's since we're talking about Kyle McCord, here's 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 my could have given it to Trey. At what point did he do? What point did he have time to think? Trey was okay. how, How long do you think he has to go to his second or third reads? The defensive lineman was on him in under two seconds. What did you want from him? Oh, you want to, you want him to get to his third or fourth read in under two seconds? This isn't Madden, my guy. So here's, here, here's, here's my thoughts about Kyle McCord here, since we're talking about him. Um, yeah, it's the, the, the I, I agree with you on that first interception. Definitely. You can you can blame you can blame it on him and I, I think it's a I think it's a split blame on both both him and Harrison there. I, I, I don't uh, think it's an even split. If, if I, like I'm I'm I'll, I'll defend Kyle McCord, but it's not an even split. But yeah, in that in that second one, yeah, I 
would not blame McCor there because he's trying to make a play there, and he he made some good play. He made some good throws in that second half, though. Like that one, the one drive, or, or was it? It was the um, it was the uh, yeah, it was the first drive, the first drive of the uh, of the uh, second half. Beautiful drive, beautiful, beautiful drive. Twelve yard or twelve play, seventy five yard for a touchdown there that was a that was an awesome drive that's that's what we were hoping to see and we were all excited there but man one one, th- one thing and Buckeye fans very are very unfortunate hate drop spikes very unfortunate mm-hmm. drops i know Buckeye, a, lot, a lot of buckeye fans are going to hate me going to hate me for saying this here but when when michigan needed a play JJ McCarthy made it like he, yep. he, whether it was on his feet, like when he got pressure on him and that's the difference between JJ and Kyle, I agree. JJ's able to escape the pocket, yep. extend those plays and, and Kyle cannot. And we, we just got to accept that after seeing 12 games. Now he cannot, he cannot extend the place. He's, no. he's a pure, pure pocket passer. Well, and Ohio State is so and Ohio State is so used to seeing a quarterback that can extend those plays, and it's I can understand the frustration, but that that's really the difference in this game here. It, you don't other than the yes, be. the two interceptions, but it's because of JJ McCarthy being able to extend plays and making great throws. Like we we well, we were as. We, we, we were saying a lot of things about J.J. Uh, in our preview game here about how he hasn't looked the same in the past few games here. But and by the I mean, way, he got to get you got, he still didn't you look good the in this. He still didn't look good in this game. But to your point, he made the plays when he, he had to. He he made those critical plays. And in this kind of game, like you got to make you got to make those you got to make those plays there. And as Spikes points out, we also can't create a pocket for Kyle McCord. And for what it's worth, you don't have to be super athletic. We talk about extending plays. Most of the time when people talk about extending plays, they're talking about someone pirouetting in the backfield, running out to the side. You can extend plays by stepping up. I mean, just look at the, the, this is what, you know, they, they call it, you know, climbing the pocket that uh, spikes just barely beats me to it. He doesn't climb the pocket well at all. No, he doesn't. Yep. Our stretch runs don't work either. That's because it requires offensive linemen to uh, hold their blocks for an extended amount of time. Quite Kyle, frankly, Kyle McCord, Kyle McCord just, I think, I think he's a he very talented to, quarterback. He's yes. a very talented quarterback, but he just he cannot extend the plays, especially this, especially this year with a not so good offensive line. You need a quarterback. You need, you need a quarterback that can extend those plays and. He, he's, he's just not the type of quarterback needs, for, for this offensive line. Uh, he, he needs to get better at climbing the pocket. He needs to get better at moving through his progressions. And uh, I think a lot of that is related to him needing to generate some sort of poise in the pocket, which is not also, which has also not been his strong suit. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so I get, so I Those are the, things the that we've been observing all year. Those are things that we've been saying, well, a young quarterback isn't necessarily good at this, and a young quarterback isn't necessarily good at that. But, it, you know, on November 26th, you're not a young quarterback anymore. That's not how it works at Ohio State. Sorry. Like, you have 10 starts in your pocket. That's, you know, you, you, you don't get to be a young quarterback anymore. And I, I think he can get better. Don't get me wrong. I think he has a whole other off season with day and company. You know, the second year is when things really click for guys most of the time. And we've been spoiled. Uh, Justin Fields and CJ Stroud are elite quarterbacks. Um, they're absolutely elite quarterbacks. And I will once a, once again point out that everyone hated both of them while they were here especially C.J. Stroud. Everyone is rewriting that history, acting like they didn't. They did. Everyone hated C.J. Stroud. People used... Yeah, no, you you, you just uh, 
yeah, Chop, you just always called for Kyle McCord all last year. That that that's all that's all you did, Chop, was ask for Kyle McCord all last season. Um here here's here's I thought I thought that I I agree with maybe you it with was the, the running season backs before. earlier. Maybe it was I, the I thought season Trey, before Chop. I thought Trey looked Trey at times looked really good. And heck, even when Chip came in on, on that drive, when it was just back and forth with Trey and Chip going at it for giving each of them two, two or three runs and then give it to the other one for two or three runs on that one drive. That was beautiful. I really, really like that. And the offensive line got some good pushes there. Uh, so I, th- I thought they did pretty well. Marvin Harrison Jr. did what he could. Uh, he had another 100 plus yard game touchdown in here too. Fleming, I, Fleming really showed up here. We, we didn't talk much about Fleming at all all year. And he had he had three catches for 58 yards in this game as well. Really, really happy to see what I uh, to see him come out. And he, he made he made that really spectacular catch as well on, on a key. Yeah, it was on a key third down, I believe, too. Uh, but yeah, it's it is is just tough to swallow here with uh, just you got a he just had two elite teams going at it and yeah just Buckeyes just just came up short here. The one the one thing that really is really concerning here, uh, I saw that I saw this on uh, social media earlier, Jared. In the second half, in the last in these last three games here. Michigan has had the ball, has had 13 uh, drives. Well, let, let's just say like complete drives. Because like kneel, like kneeling on the last drive, I'm not going to count sure. those. 13 drives. 13 drives in the last three games in the second half. Michigan scored 12 of those and only punted once. Zero. So that says zero turnovers. Yeah. One punt. 12 scoring drives. One thing the defense is going to have to work on this off season. And they, you know, listen, the, the, the defense was bad last year. The defense was bad the year before that. That's, that's a given. Um, but one of the things the defense is going to have to work on this off season is generating more turnovers. Um, but you know, what you know i mean the defense played considerably better this year than it did the past two years that needs to be said like it wasn't anything like it was the last two years um the the team did not like totally buckle and fall apart in the fourth quarter like it did the past two years uh in fact you know and and they did let michigan get a field goal but you know they did get a stop on the Michigan's last legitimate drive of the game. They gave the offense the ball back with over a minute left. I know they, they did eat a lot of clock, but they still got, they they got the ball back with enough time. Um, It could have been better. Yes. Did they quit? Did they buckle? Did they, you know what I mean? Like it's the last two years, that would have been a touchdown. And it probably would have been a relatively quick touchdown at that point in the game. Um, we did get hosed on the OPI. There, there. I'm never going to complain about refs, and I'm not going to blame the refs because there were a lot of bad calls and a lot of bad, like there were bad calls in both directions in this game. Yeah. Um, the the refs were bad, and I don't just mean like bad for us they were just bad um the but the, you know there was just a couple of the ball spotting was absolutely garbage you're absolutely uh absolutely Stuart. it absolute absolutely terrible um the and you know and there were a couple just close calls that could have gone in either direction you know refereeing wise that didn't you know I, I think if you look at the Denzel Burke interception that wasn't, 
that that would have stayed whatever it was called on the field. Whatever that's it. That's it. That's a impossible play to call at full speed. And quite frankly, even when you slowed it down, I think they just would have left it, whatever was on the field. That just, that was a 50, 50 call and we didn't get it. And it sucks. It sucks a lot. It could have been the difference in the game, but that's, that's football, man. Like that was a, yeah, totally a pick. That was a fucking, you're, I mean, you're, I think you're being Ohio state fans. I, I think that was just, a, that was a 50, 50 ball. It, it could have gone in either direction. They were never going to overturn that in either direction. That was never going to get overturned. They were leaving that what it was on the field straight up. The difference was the pick that set up Michigan's first touchdown. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can point at and say that's the difference. You can point at the Burke interception that wasn't, and you can point at the uh, OPI that wasn't called on Michigan's last legitimate drive. Um, you you can point at the interception at the early part of the game. I I'm I'm sorry if I'm I'm sorry if you don't like like it Zach but that was it was a 50-50 ball. The Burke interception was a 50-50 ball. If you think that was absolutely 100% an interception that should have been overturned, then you're you're just wearing your scarlet sunglasses. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I believe that Burke did intercept the ball. I I truly do. He he had the ball, he had the ball. Did you expect it to line. be overturned? Well, I'm getting there. I he had the ball in his possession. Over the in line, his there. possession or in a shared possession, because I will point out that shared possession goes to the offensive player. But also, but also too, Jared, like. The ball was was neither was neither completed, like nobody had full possession of that ball at that time. Now, they if they both had it going if they both had it going down and then made a football play afterwards and they still had possession of it, then yes, it goes to the off. It goes to the offense, but you, you saw as the ball was loose still. And after the, the uh, football move, Burke had Burke had possession of that. I, I truly, I truly believe that. That's but, fine. You can truly but, 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 believe but to it. Your, but, but, to, but to your point, Jared, though, it's, they're going, they're going to they're going to maintain what whatever they called on the field. If it was intercepted, it was going to stay interception. If it was a touchdown, it, it would have stayed a touchdown. But That's what I, I'm saying. I truly like, I truly believe I truly believe that Burke had that had that interception. Yeah, and then you know there was, um, and it was that was it that was it that same play that he the. JJ McCarthy just absolutely put it right in between Burke and Matthews. Was it that same play? Like mm -hmm. the, Burke so. and Matthews were like half of a, not even half of a person apart. They were half of a very skinny person apart. Like, 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 like I said, when JJ had to make plays, he, yeah, he made plays. He, it was a hell of he a threw throw. It right where it needs to be. Absolutely. And, and honestly, I don't think if you gave him 10 chances to make that throw, he makes it twice, but well, he made it. Like, and you can't even, you can't even be mad at Matthews or Burke on that play. Like that's just perfect coverage. And like, that's just good football. I'm sorry. That's just good football. That's the defense doing everything they could and the offense doing everything they could. And it just has to turn out one way or the other. That's just, that's just what good football looks like. I'm sorry. And it sucks that the refs called it in one direction when we wanted them to call it in the other direction. And that sucks. Um, it could have been called in either direction. It just, it could have been called in either direction. It, that's impossible to call in at full speed for the ref on the field. Absolutely impossible to call. And I, there was no evidence to overturn it in either direction. In my opinion, it, it was what it was. There's an egregious no call offensive holding the prior play to that play. Oh, yeah, gosh. they, they there, were, they were letting the offensive so lines hold on both sides. Like we benefited yes. from a lot of uncalled holding calls too. Like if we're being honest, we, we benefited a lot from some no called holds. Um, 
it was the, the refs were letting dudes hold all over the field that they 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 were it was didn't see any by msu well then you didn't want to <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get into some grades here jared because I, th I think as we're going to go through the grades we'll, i, I we'll want to talk about some of these other possessions about I need to, with these other i need to talk about something possession. else possession i need to talk about something else first i started talking about it i didn't i didn't really get there michigan has sucked since they fired lloyd carr this is this is for the fire ryan day mm -hmm. crowd this is for the fire ryan day crowd from the second they fired Lloyd Carr until the year 2021, Michigan has sucked. Lloyd Carr took over Michigan in 1995, all time record of 122 and 40. He won or shared five Big Ten conference titles during that time. Won half of a national title. His record against top 10 teams was 20 and eight. He's a he's in the College Football Hall of Fame is the second best. Michigan coach of all time behind fielding Yost, in my opinion, don't don't give me that Bo Schembechler bullshit. He was five and one. He was five and one. Against Ohio State until Jim Tressel took over. Then he went one and six against Ohio State. Now, despite the fact that Lloyd Carr is clearly the second best coach that Michigan ever had, uh, he gets retired. You know, you know, the official says he retired. Well, he got retired. Because, you know, you have to do something, right? Just like the, just like the Fire Ryan Day crowd is saying now, you have to do something. Car over Bo and Yost? No, 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 no. Car over Bo, not Yost. I said he's the second greatest. No, Bo, Bo's totally overrated. He never won a national title. He, he's only good because of the rivalry between him and Woody. Woody made Bo in more ways than one. Yost is clearly their best coach. Lloyd Carr is second best, clearly. So they had to do something. You have to beat Ohio State. You have to do something. Do something. Please, God, do something. They hire Rich Rod. Rich Rod goes three and nine, five and seven, seven and six. He finishes in the Big Ten, ninth, tenth and seventh, only going to one bowl game in three years and losing it. Ohio State fans, it is not your God given right to be good. If you think, Ohio State is incapable of hiring their own Rich Rod. You're wrong. If you think Ohio State will automatically make a good coaching hire after they quote unquote fire Ryan Day, you're wrong. So then, and I've and I've already seen Ohio State fans saying this. I've already, well, we need an Ohio State guy. Day's not an Ohio State guy. We need an Ohio State guy. We need, we need an Ohio guy. We need, we need an Ohio guy, which ironically was the same thing that Michigan fans were saying after Rich Rod. So they went and got their Michigan man in Brady Hoke. Now, Hoke was pretty good as long as the bar was Rich Rod. He went 11 2 their first season. Then then fell off, went to eight and five, seven and six and five and seven. But hey, at least Brady Hoke beat Ohio State. Once when Ohio State had a interim head coach and. You know. And again, if you think Ohio State. Is incapable of making two consecutive bad coaching hires and having a six year, seven year fall off from grace. If you think that is impossible at Ohio state, you're wrong. I, I could be doing the same thing for Alabama right now. Y'all remember Don Shula's kid when he coached Alabama? No, you don't. Maybe you do. Maybe you're old like me. You'd consider day a bad hire. Absolutely fucking lutely not. I 
I know he's he's one in three against Michigan, but that's literally the only blemish on his record. That's it. Was Cooper a bad hire? Uh, I think you have to. Co Cooper is Ohio State's Franklin. Cooper was the right guy to get Ohio State from where they were. And then pass it off, and, you know, get them to where he left them and then pass them off to someone else. He Cooper is Ohio State's James Franklin. Uh, I think you have to remember that Ohio State was um, not in great shape before Cooper got there and that Cooper left Ohio State in a better condition than he left it. Um, should he have been fired? Yes. Should James Frank, should Penn State maybe be looking to move on from James Franklin? Yes. So then, here comes Harbaugh. Harbaugh star starts off pretty strong, goes 10 and 3, 10 and 3. Then he goes 8 and 5. Then the revenge tour team happens. They go 10 and 3. And then they go 9 and 4. Then they go 2 and 4. And through all of those first six seasons, Harbaugh has yet to beat Ohio State. He's 0-5 and, and dodged him once. And yes, I believe in my heart of hearts that he straight up dodged Ohio State in 2020. Michigan was sub the COVID limits, and they simply decided not to play. Are you hearing me? Harbaugh started off 0-5 against Ohio State. And they are now one of the best two teams in the country. We would have fired Harbaugh well before he figured it out. Thank you, Spikes, for reading the subtext. That was the subtext. Thank you. I don't know... I really think recruiting is the single biggest reason for the last three losses. If you're talking specifically about offensive line recruiting, I agree. Outside of that, I don't agree. And, and, Ryan, and Ryan Day, I don't want to say fix, but he, he got rid of the issue there. And it just, unfortunately, with how recruiting works here, it just, it's going to take a couple of cycles here, a couple of seasons until it gets back to where it needs to be. Day was part of the winning culture under my... Okay, stop. Stop. If you honestly think... That I, I am... I am... I am fucking tired of the... Well, this is... This is... Well, this is Urban Myers. Well, he inherited this team. Well, this is Urban Myers. To, guys. He's been the coach at Ohio State. For now... Is it five full seasons? Five full regular seasons. You're honestly going to tell me. Do, do I need to remind you of this? I just gave you the story of Lloyd Carr. Do I need to give you the story of. Uh, I don't know Wh which coach do I pick. How about Larry Coker. How, how about Larry Coker. How, how far and how fast did Miami fall off under Larry Coker? But all, I could give you a thousand names. You, you can inherit a good team for may, maybe two seasons. Maybe two seasons you can inherit a good team. That's it. You, you can't... If anything past two seasons, that's your team. That's it. And yeah, it sucks. I, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate that we're on a three game that, that those teams beat Michigan. That's nonsense. Absolutely nonsense. Look at the teams. Look at the Michigan teams that they were playing. 
I once again, Ohio State fans want to always see themselves as the protagonist of the story. You're not acknowledging that those are entirely different Michigan teams. They are not blank slate stormtroopers there for the shooting. Checks the record. Yeah, okay. Cause yeah, th uh, that's you're proving my point now. You're proving my point now. I said at least two years. You're, you're proving some grades here. You're Jared. proving my point now, Chop. You, you Ohio State fans, all fans, only see them, only see their their team as the protagonist. They don't acknowledge that other teams do things too. Let's do the grades. To answer your um, your question, Zach, should they be? Recruiting the hood like trust on Urban. Urban, fuck, Urban. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Urban. What? Urban no, 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 Kyle. Do not, do not fucking entertain that question. That's disgusting. I no. Shut up. No, that's, that's all, a, it's, all no, I was going to no, say. No, 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 no. All, no, no. All do I was going to say is Dave. Dave's that, Dave's Kyle, that's a disgusting question. Do not, do not respond to that. That's that's a fucking disgusting question. What the fuck does recruit the hood mean? Shut up. You're. That's a that's a that's a disgusting question. I I won't stand for that. That ooh, I almost banned you. All right. Let's move on to the grades, Kyle. Coaching Jared. I give him a straight C. I'll give him a straight C. I think that's fair. Um There were some goods, but there was yeah. There were some yeah. goods, but just needed to see more. I need to see some more creativity on both sides. On both sides, there, there, there was times where JJ got all the time he, he needed, and there were other times that, yeah, just straight straight C. By the way, I see. Uh... Trestle wanted good character Ohio guys. Jim Trestle, if we're talking about recruiting violations, and I'm not just talking about tattoos, Jim Trestle ran the dirtiest program Ohio State has ever run. People don't like it when I say that because it fucks with their image of Jim Trestle as being the good guy. Ohio State was SEC levels dirty under Jim Trestle when it comes to recruiting. What did you grade the, grade the coaching, Jared? I, uh, C, C sounds fair to me as well. Um, I, I think you said yeah. it right. There are good and there are bads. Um, I know you want creativity on offense, but again, the offensive line totally... Uh, it's hard to be creative on offense when you can't reliably give your quarterback more than two seconds to throw the ball. And quite frankly, I think that the coaching staff gets a lot of credit for being creative enough to design some run plays to, to get things going to, you know, combat against what is a, an elite Michigan defensive line. Mm -hmm. Quarterback. Quarterback, I'm, I'm, I'll give Cobb McCord a, I'll give him a C minus. I'm, I'm being very generous with, with Kyle because I know, I know it wasn't, I know there was a lot that a lot of people were putting the blame on him and yeah, sure. But I, I thought he made some, I thought he made some good throws, but it, it wasn't on him that lost, that lost the game though. I, I, I don't there, think there, 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 there was part, there was parts. Yeah. There was definitely parts he wish he had back and definitely, uh, uh, yeah, definitely wish he had back, but yeah, I think C minus. Uh, you you I, can convince me to a D, but I'll, I'll no, say I, 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 I think you're going in the wrong direction. I, I think he's a C plus. Um, mm. Again, like before people jump on my, it's a C plus. Like I'm not, I'm not giving him an A here, but like, I don't blame him at all for the last interception. Not at all. He, he had a second and a half to throw the ball 
he tried to get it to his guy. I, I don't know what you expect him to do in that situation. I thought he did a great job getting rid of it halfway competently. And by halfway competently, I mean, he actually got rid of the ball instead of getting hit and spiking it into the ground because he was getting hit. I still don't think he got the ball away totally cleanly. I don't know if it would have mattered if he got it away cleanly, but the dude did what he had to do. All right, running backs. I, I thought I thought when they had their moments, I thought I thought the running backs did very well. I thought they did very well. So I'll, I'll give them a B plus. I agree. I was, I was I was happy with the limited uh carries that they had. I I liked what I saw, and it was just unfortunate that yeah, it was just unfortunate they couldn't get the ball to them more. So I'd say B plus. Yeah. They they, they ran they were in against the number one rushing defense in the country averaging four yards of pop that's good that's good Ohio State struggled rushing the ball many times this year four yards of pop against Michigan I'd take that pretty much every year so B plus I agree. I, I I I second what Kyle said. All right, offensive line D. I'm giving them straight up D. The, the the only the only saving grace for me giving them an F was that they they only allowed one sack. No, I don't even give them that. Um, again, the entire game plan was designed for Kyle McCord to get rid of the ball immediately. People, oh, why wasn't Kyle McCord going through his reads better? And by the way, he does need to go through his reads better. I'm not saying he doesn't. But I, but his, the clock in his head is instant. He has to get, he has to get the snap and get rid of the ball. That's what he's being trained to do because they have to. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, he grade? isn't ruined. Would you grade the offensive line, line Jared? I, I hope. I hope not. Um, I'm going to go very slightly nicer than you. Um, only because I thought they did well when running the ball. Um, I'm going to go C minus again. I give them that good of a grade because they did do good, a good job running, blocking most of the game. Right. Tight, tight end here. And again, when I say they, this is against the best run defense in the country. All right, tight, tight end, tight end here. I, it, it, it's so, it's so tough for me to to grade the tight end here. I wanted to see more, wanted to see more Stover here, but um, yeah, I, I, I'll say I'll say like a, a C C plus somewhere around there, like. They didn't do anything terrible, but they didn't do anything that stood out to me. Um, I thought Stover played well when it was thrown to him. Um, it wasn't thrown to him a lot, and I don't know if that's game plan or him not getting open. Um, I'm going to go with a straight B. Um, not a ton higher than Kyle's. Uh, and, you know, you also have to you also have to acknowledge that, you know, when we talk about how good the run blocking looked, that that also goes for the tight ends. So um, I think that might be the difference between Kyle and I's grade. If we're talking purely pass, C plus seems fair. Uh, factoring in the run blocking, I'm going to knock him up to a B. Wide receivers. I. If you take Marvin Harrison Jr. out of here, it'd be a lot lower grade. But I'd give him like a C. I think the wide receivers is a C here. Uh, Marvin Harrison, 118 yards, got a touchdown in here. Uh, Emeka got himself a touchdown as well. Fleming Fleming had his best game of the year, possibly. I, I, I uh, haven't, statistically, didn't really he look at the stats for, for Fleming. Uh, but man, Ibuka just uncharacteristic. Um, like especially that first drive, just missed that, um, just dropped pass. And then there was another critical 
pass that he dropped. It's tough to it would be that's a tough catch trying to catch it in midair while you're getting hit too. But it's definitely a a ball that Mecca's <clears throat> able to catch in the past too. So drop balls, struggling to get open. C. Okay, so you, you say they're struggling to get open. Chops down here saying that they're struggling to get open. I will once again point out that it's hard to get open in two seconds. It's hard to get open when you can't run. When the, the defense isn't respecting your deep threat because you don't have enough time to throw it deep. It's one of the reasons why those seams and those flies were open. Michigan was playing up. They weren't respecting a deep pass because Ohio State was not, you know, able to run a bunch of deep patterns because they didn't have time to. Which is why, like, you know, offensive line only let up one sack. Well, that's because they game planned it that way. Because mm -hmm. they had yeah. to game plan it that way. All right. Uh, defensive not line. Just open. Not just getting, not the not getting open was against everyone, not just Saturday. Because the game plan, guys, wide open deep. Wide open deep when? Wide open deep when? Because if, once again, it, it's sort of like on the sack where I forget again, I forget if it was Fleming or, or a Mecca there, you know, it's like, Oh, was anyone open? And then it was like, Oh yeah, look, the post down the middle was open. Yeah, it was. But by the time the guy actually broke open, Cal McCord was already trying to avoid the sack. So you can say the guy was open, but the guy has to come open in time for the quarterback to see it and throw it. Yeah, I understand. No, 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 I'm Florida Buck. It's it's a podcast. I have to say these things. I'm not. I'm not talking exclusively to you. I'm talking to everybody. I, I understand that you understand. I, uh, defensive line, on, Jared. To, yep, defensive line. I'm going to give a B. Uh, I thought they did very, very well on the um, on stopping the run. Other other than the one long long run that they allowed uh for yeah, they, they allowed one long run on Quorum that ended up for that uh that touchdown. They they they, they held Quorum and, and Edwards really well. I th I thought the defensive line did very well. But the reason I'm not giving giving them any higher than a B, it's it's on the passing side. Yeah. They, something they struggled all year is getting that pressure. And, and and it showed here at times JJ had had time to throw and made those throws very accurate. He was 80% completion in this game. 80%, 16 for 20. That's what an offensive line can do for you to get yep. you time to to make those throws. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, being, absolutely. Which you got? Linebackers. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I, I will once All again right. copy and paste everything uh, you said. Line, line, linebacker, linebackers. Um, I, I, I'm going to just say a straight, straight up D, straight D. I very uncharacteristic of um, missing tackles. Eichenberg comes back in this game after his injury. Eichenberg he was not. Was he was not him. Not good. No, he, he was he not himself. Is, this was not the Eichenberg we've seen all year where he was very consistent tackling in the middle of plays. He just did not seem like himself no. and it, it cost him in a, in a few plays. There's a few plays that it really cost Ohio state. Yeah. He got burnt hard by Loveland a couple times. Um, it, he, whatever, and, whatever, whatever it, whatever his specific injury issue was, he's not over it yet. Um, that, that that was not the Eichenberg we've seen the past two years. Yeah. Yeah, but I I was I'll say a straight D. I'll say a straight D. Just not 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 making the tackles, not covering Loveland there, just in the middle of the field there. Yeah. I mean, I think D. they also get some credit for 
you know, keeping Michigan's running game for the most part under wraps. Um, not a not a ton. It's still mostly on the defensive line. So like I'll 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 bump yeah. it up to like a D plus, but I'm not going any further than a D plus. Yeah. Uh corner cornerbacks. I thought this this is the one position. This is the one position in out of Ohio State that did very well. I I, I give the corners an A. I I thought I thought the corners did exceptionally well in this game. They held Wilson in check. He only had three catches in this game. Johnson had four catches in this game. So they're two they're two uh leading receivers, wide receivers, were held for seven catches and under and under 70 yards. I, yeah, I, th- I thought that was, I thought that was very well. So I, I'll give him an A. And again, like the interception that wasn't called, like that could have been a total game changer and it, it could have been yep. like, yep. that was a hell of a play by Burke. It was an absolutely amazing play by Burke. It's just the refs didn't see it that way. And that sucks for us, but. Oh, well, and I see, I see you gave him an A as well. Yeah, no, I once again, um, Kyle, I totally Kyle started this episode like hours before we started the episode saying Jared and I are going to disagree on a lot of stuff. I haven't disagreed with much you've said. Uh, safety <laughs> safeties. I'd, I'd, I'd give this safeties like a B. Uh, may, maybe not as didn't do as well as the corners. I thought. Uh, yeah, there, there were times that they were just bad angles. I mean, the the that touchdown by Corum style that <clears throat> looking at that replay, man, I, styles is going to look at that and just thinking to himself, what the hell was I doing? That was just such a bad angle from styles and Corum just made him, made him go inside and just took it to the house there. Not, not, not the best, not the best game that styles has had this season. So I'll, I'll see a B. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Mean, so, so I was definitely sh- showing his youth in that game. Yeah, yeah. And, he's he's going to learn. He'll he'll learn from it. Styles Styles is the future of this of this defense. He he'll learn he'll learn from this game here. And um, yeah, yeah. Me too. I I absolutely love Styles, but yeah, not 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 his greatest game though. Uh, yeah. No, I I I think. I, I agree with most of what you said. Um, my, I want to, I want to give a reason, but like, I don't know, we're running over on time. I'm just going to say, I'm going to go up a B plus for pretty nuanced reasons that don't really matter. So let's just move on to special teams, special teams. First Wait, year. What do you mean Hartford get... played like shit? One, I don't think Hartford, Hartford, played Hartford was lot. okay. Yeah, One, Hartford I don't think was he okay. played a ton. And two, what do you mean? He played like shit. I didn't ever remember seeing him play like shit. You know, looking at the stats here, Hartford had zero tackles. So, well, and I'm saying I don't even think he played that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, special teams, Jared. First year, first year, I'm giving this grade to an Ohio State position. M. That's I'm not giving that an M. That's, that's the Tuesday show. That's the Tuesday show. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we don't F. do M's on. I'm giving this show. an F. I'm giving an F to the special teams. I really don't know why they get an F. Um, not that I'm super high on them myself. I mean, I'm just going to give them a C because they just kind of were there. Yeah, I know. Fielding missed. That sucks. He made, he made his first try that unfortunately didn't count. Again, it's just, it's just another, it's just another 50, 50 that didn't play out the, the field goal kick. Punting, punting was awful was awful in this game average it average just over 30 35 yards and especially in that first half those first few drives where the teams were kind of fueling each other trying to trying to figure out what to do michigan michigan was winning the the um the field position battle there and uh yeah well not not quite a not quite an 80 yard punt he he had a 71 uh yard punt there but yeah, not 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 the greatest game for Murko. And yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame the the missed field goal on fielding. That's that's a tough one. That's 52 yards. That's that's tough on him. I'm not I'm not gonna blame him on that. But 
I, I, but again, I, he made the first just, try. He, he did. He he didn't make. Yeah, he didn't make the first try. But I'm, I'm still going to stick with the F there. Just. Yeah. What do you mean? I, fuck I'm this just, Aussie utter, shit. Utter, Cam Johnston utterly, wants a word with you. Utterly, utterly disappointed in special teams this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Disappointed. I mean, for the most part, like special teams was just kind of there. I mean, all, I mean, if we're talking all year, it was just kind of there. Um, yeah, not very special. That, that that's correct, spikes. Um, I just, I don't know. It was just there. That didn't do anything spectacular the entire season, like the little kid in the Incredibles sitting in this big wheel saying, "I'm waiting for something amazing to happen." <laughs> Me too, kid. That's the special teams. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not one for, I'm not one to. I, I see all of you talking about Parker Fleming in the chat. I'm not one to call for someone's job. I, I'll i just say it would be kind of neat if jo James Laurinaitis got a promotion and was allowed to go out on the road and recruit. I'm just, and if something needs to happen to facilitate that, then so be it. All right, All right. Um, Buckeye leaves, Jarrett. Buckeye leaves. Uh, no one gets a leaf. You don't lose to Michigan and, and get leaves. And also, we're over on time. So... Um, screw it. I, I will. I, I will give a shout out. I'll give a shout out to uh to Jack Sawyer. In this game, I thought Jack Sawyer had a great game. Uh, he 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 definitely made his presence known, especially early on. I was really I was I really liked what I saw with Sawyer. It was just it's a team effort. It's a team effort, and 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 the team as a whole failed. Um, by the way, if you're wondering, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, can Ohio State still get into the playoffs? Um, that's the thing we're, we're going to talk about on the, on the Tuesday show. So yep. we're going to, we're going to do collegiate chaos. We're going to, we're going to update our, our, um, tier list and then we're going to do some, then we're going to do some scenarios um, we're gonna do some scenarios and we'll see what scenarios could potentially land Ohio state in the playoffs. So that we'll be doing that on the Tuesday show, Kyle, like I said, we're already like well over an hour at this point. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? No, we'll, we'll just go ahead and end it. Oh, the crew one crew one, moving on to the Eastern conference finals to take on in-state rival Cincinnati. State rival Cincinnati. All right. And the um, basketball, yeah, and the and the basketball team won, Jared. Beat Alabama. They beat Alabama and and they um <laughs> oh who who do 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 do. Yeah, they, they also beat uh, Santa Clara uh to win the uh the classic that they run. It was the uh Emerald Emerald Coast Classic. So yeah, that's, that's a good showing for them. Happy happy for that. I I knew, I knew Stuart. Um, All right, but no, that, that's that's it. That's it for me. Is just those two highlights. Okay. Uh, tonight's ending music is a band out of I want to say Dayton. Uh, they're called the Works, spelled W E R K S. The Works. So with all that being said, we are a March team. How many? I know, I know you meant basketball. Well, how when was the last time we won a uh, a tournament game? And I'll just I'll just leave that and uh, go ahead and say, uh, yeah, uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. Once again, this band's called The Works. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, th these are The Works.